Blog Talk Radio.
insanity. You know, the insanity of this crazy world. So many people are having such difficult time just holding it together, finding enough time to um, spend even with family and friends. Uh, Most people don't have any free time or any spare time to even study the scripture or pursue and develop a relationship with the Father and the Son. And um, it's been purposely orchestrated, created. Life has been made so difficult so that most would have to spend all their time just surviving, just trying to get enough to eat, just trying to find a comfortable place to lay down your head. And, you know, and then being able to take care of others. Satan has an agenda to destroy family and destroy the unity of it and to cause um, families to become disjointed in such a way that it's a focus on individuality. And that certainly is the truth here in America where... Most people have their lives and their focus and don't even have time enough to sit down as group and share a meal. You know, most people are just sharing hellos and goodbyes as they come and go uh, through the different routines that each one of us are, you know, are running through as we um, move through life. And and so I pray for peace and a moment of serenity for all of you that you can find this in, in your every day because not many people do. Not many people even have the time to slow down enough to really rest and recover and allow the body to heal in such a way that you can, you know, continue on with the the cycle. So many people are pushing themselves beyond their limits and beyond the safe capacity of their bodies to manage. And this, you know, especially I, I gave a shout out to mothers a couple shows ago and I want to do the same here in this instance because it's appropriate so many mothers are so giving of themselves that they often put themselves at risk their own health their own well-being um, placing that of their children or their families their spouses their loved ones before that of their own and how mothers will run themselves ragged um, just taking care of families and not not address their own needs and concerns the way that they should. And God bless all of you mothers for being willing and, and loving your children in such capacity that you would give of yourself in that generous way. But do know that the family members, the loved ones, your children, they need you to have balance and to take care of yourselves as well. That's part of um, part of good family dynamics in that all of us have to be selfish somewhat in in taking care of ourselves and that, you know, we have to do those kind of things and not, not selfish in such way that you put others at risk, but selfish in such way that you are, you know, taking care of yourself adequately. So, well, I've got a, a pretty interesting show lined up for you this evening. I've got... A couple texts that I'm going to bring forth, and we're going to talk about 
the consummation of the age and the the end of days and how that unfolds according to two texts we're going to look into this evening. One's called the origin of the world. And the other one is called the Gospel of the Secret Supper. The first one is part of the Nag Hammadi collection that was found in 1946. Um, and that these codices, some of them were actually burnt in the fire. But um, praise God, we, you know, these that we do have were spared. And these particular codices are supposedly from the time that Christ came back after he had uh, was crucified on the cross, descended down into hell, freed all the patriarchs, took them up into paradise, ascended up into heaven, took his seat at the right hand of God, of the Father, and then came back down to the earth and taught um, the apostles and what would later become the early church, taught them the secrets of the kingdom. And these are from that time that he spent with his apostles. And so they're very interesting teachings. Um, Most people don't understand them, and most people also think that they contradict the Old and the New Testament, which they don't. They, in fact, confirm and bring out what are little-known secrets that have still yet to be veiled all the way up until this time. And so that's also another reason why I think it's important to at least look into them, whether you study them or not. They're an interesting read as well. The Nakamati Codice. The next book that we're going to look at is called The Gospel of the Secret Supper. And this particular text is a Cathar text, one of only two major Cathar works that are available to us. And very insightful, interesting read. Not widely available at all. And so we'll look at some of that this evening as well. Uh, But before we do, I want to go into an article. I want to read an article that came out just a couple days ago, which will is confirming witness for a lot of the things that we've been teaching here on this particular show, because we also cover the New World Order, Uh, the governmental conspiracies, the conspiracy realities that we're dealing with as a world and as a people, as a as a collective. Um, and in fact, my fifth book, the one that I wrote right after my awakening to the whole Lucifer, Father of Cain issue, which was my fourth book, my fifth book was called Awaken to the New World Order. And it's basically a compilation of articles that I wrote during the time of my awakening to what is the strange nature of reality. And it's something that each one of us has to go through when we unveil truth in its ugly form and then have to learn to accept it. Um, and then in accepting it can then make the necessary changes to implement life in such a way that you can choose to, if you so desire, make others aware and share, you know, these things with those that, in my opinion, are ready for it because when I first woke up, I wanted to share this with everybody. I wanted to go shout it from the rooftop and uh, shake people by their shoulders. And But you you can't do that. It's like throwing pearls before the swine. Unless people are ready, they're not going to get what it is that may be truth right before them. 
And even the gospel will read as a foreign language until people have the ICT and the gate to hear. And so this article just recently came out. It's called, The American and British Government Knew Down to the Day of the Coming Japanese Attack on Pearl Harbor. And they let it happen to justify America's entry into World War II. And for those that did not know this, this also follows in line with the series of false flag government-sponsored terrorist events which have been utilized to implement um, first strike and uh, pursuit of war. And this has been done time after time after time. And for those that don't know, the American government removed the radar stations even from uh, the Alaskan coastline in order to allow the attacks to be surprised, to be a surprise. And they allowed the attacks to be a surprise in order to inflict such tragedy that it would justify uh, an empathic response from the American people which would engage our government to then bring us into what would be World War II. The Vietnam War was also the Gulf of Tonkin experiment, um, that supposedly happened. That was a lie. and The NSA also reported on that. Uh, and so if you study and you look back into the hidden um, history of government-sponsored terror and how it's been utilized by even rulers such as Nero back in the time of Rome, how he utilized, blamed the Christians for burning down Rome as a uh, premise to round up and attack and kill and slaughter. Christians. This was also something that was done by Hitler, uh, the Reichstag fire where he burned down his own parliament and blamed it on the, the socialists, uh, the, the communists. And then implemented the Enabling Act. And here in this country, we had 9-11. And even in 1993 with the first attack on the World Trade Center. That was FBI connected. And so even with Al-Qaeda, the creation of Al-Qaeda to combat the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan during the early and late 80s, the CIA through the Pakistani ISI intelligence services there funded the creation of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban in Afghanistan. And they didn't, after the creation of this, you know, this um, intelligence, they didn't just give up control. And so we have a series of controlled opposition events taking place, the Hegelian dialectic, in order to bring the country to a certain agenda. So I'm going to just read this real quick, and then we're going to go into some of this other information, because it's very interesting what I want to read this evening. All right. It says this. We don't contest that World War II was, in many ways, a good war. The Nazis, Imperial Japanese, and Fascist Italians were nasty folks trying to take over the world who brutalized millions within their own borders and in the nations they occupied. But a full and honest account of World War II shows that some big American banks funded the Nazis. The Bush family was also part of this. And America dropped nuclear bombs on Japan when top U.S. military officials said it wasn't necessary. And as shown below, we probably knew about the coming Pearl harbor attack, but let it happen to justify America's entry into World War II. The White House apparently had a year before Pearl Harbor 
launched an eight-point plan to provoke Japan into war against the U.S., including, for example, an oil embargo. The rationale for this provocation is that the U.S. wanted to aid its allies in fighting the Nazis and other Axis powers and decided that an attack by Japan would be the most advantageous justification for the U.S. to enter into World War II. Moreover, Honolulu newspapers warned of a possible attack by the Japanese on Pearl Harbor. Indeed, as the following BBC documentary with interviews with many of the main players, including military officers, codebreakers, shows the American and British, the British too, knew of the Japanese plan to attack Pearl Harbor down to the exact date of the attack and allowed it to happen to justify America's entry into World War II. Um, Robert B. Smith summarizing some of the key points that a World War II veteran agreed with this strategy for getting America into World War II. Um, just another two paragraphs here. It has also recently been discovered that the FDR administration, I want to also say that the History Channel had a documentary uh, on this particular aspect of hidden truth. It has also been recently discovered that the FDR administration took numerous affirmative steps to ensure that the Japanese attack would be successful. These steps included taking extraordinary measures to hide information from the commanders in Hawaii about the location of Japanese warships, in for which information which they normally would be informed, and denying their request to allow them to scout for Japanese ships, and other actions to blind the commanders in Hawaii so that the attacks would succeed. In addition, the heads of the Army and Navy suddenly disappeared and remained unreachable on the night before Pearl Harbor, and they would later testify over and over that they couldn't remember where they were. Two weeks after Pearl Harbor, the Navy classified all documents top secret, and the Navy Director of Communications sent the memo ordering all commanders to destroy all notes of anything in writing related to the attack. More importantly, all radio operators and cryptographers were gagged on the threat of imprisonment and loss of all benefits. The commanders in Hawaii, General Short and Admiral Kimmel, were scapegoated as being the cause for the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, and according to a statement made to the privately but leading Pearl Harbor scholar, the government repeatedly denied foreknowledge and labeled anyone who discussed the military's prior knowledge of the attacks as a nutty, a nutty conspiracy theorist. Now, I'm going to stop here because I want to go ahead and go into some of this other information, but I want to say this. Even the attacks of 9-11, the attacks of 9-11, when they went down here in America, we immediately began to bomb Afghanistan. Now, what is not spoken about is that our military had months before began the process of moving all of that military hardware into place in order for those bombings to be able to take place. And so, yes, they had foreknowledge on 9-11 as well. All right. Now, this information ties into somewhat what we're about to go into. What I'm going to be talking about is the the end of days according to these two Gnostic texts, these two Nag Hammadi codices and this other one from the Gospel of the Secret Supper, which is a text supposedly that was revealed to the apostles during the Last Supper. And it's a very interesting text. And the reason I say that it is tied to and connected to is because government-sponsored terror is one of the tactics of the New World Order, and the New World Order is controlled 
by the archons and the fallen angels. And what is interesting about these uh, these texts that I'm going to go into is that Yahushua, Savior Messiah, he speaks about the fallen ones, the archons, these rulers of darkness, specifically labeling them and gives detail on their existence and how to combat them, which is another reason why I think these texts should be studied or at least read into. And, and, I, and it's also another reason why I think they've been so ostracized and so um, criticized and, and, and labeled with negative connotation so that most people will, won't even go and open them and look at them just because of the associations that have been poured upon them. So I'm going to spend the next few weeks bringing you some of this information. All right, on the origin of the world. Before the consummation of the age, the whole place will be shaken by great thunder. Then the rulers will lament, crying out on account of their death. The angels will mourn for their human beings, and the demons will weep for their times and seasons. And their people will mourn and cry on account of their death. And then the age will begin, and they will be disturbed. Their kings will be drunk from the flaming sword and will make war against one another so that the earth will be drunk from the blood that is poured out. And the seas will be troubled by that war. Then the sun will darken and the moon will lose its light. The stars of the heaven will disregard the course and great thunder will come out of great power that is above all the powers of chaos. The place where the firmament of the woman is situated, when she has created the first work, she will take off her wise flame of afterthought and would put on irrational wrath. Then she will drive out the gods of chaos whom she had created together with the chief creator. She will cast them down to the abyss. They will be wiped out by their own injustice. For they will become like the mountains that blaze out fire, and they will consume one another until they are destroyed by their chief creator. When he destroys them, he will turn against himself and destroy himself until he ceases to be, and their heavens will fall upon one another and their powers will burn. The realms will also be overthrown and the chief creator's heaven will fall and split in two. Likewise, his stars and their sphere will fall down to the earth and the earth will not be able to support them. They will fall down to the abyss and the abyss will be overthrown. The light will cover the darkness and obliterate it. It will be like something that never existed. And the source of the darkness will be dissolved. The deficiency will be plucked out as its root and thrown down to the darkness. And the light will withdraw up to its root. And the glory of the unconceived will appear. And it will fill all the eternal realms when the prophetic utterances and the writings of those who are the rulers, that's the archon, are revealed and are fulfilled by those who are called perfect. Those who were not perfected in the unconceived father will receive their glories in their realm and in the kingdoms of the immortals, but they will not ever enter the kingless realm. For it is necessary that everyone enter that place from which he has come, Each one by his deeds and his gnosis will reveal his nature. All right. I'm going to skip to the Gnostic of the Secret Supper. 
this is going to be a very interesting book for those that have never heard about it. And it's only recently that it's been available on the web, and it's only available through a book called the um, Gnostic Bible. And in that book, you can find this particular text. Give me just a minute to find it here. Um, But what is interesting also about this text is that uh, it speaks about, again, those truths that not many people know about. Like it gives confirmation of Cain uh, in this particular text. Here it is, actually. All right. And I probably do have time to read the whole thing, so but let me go ahead and check this one thing real quick. All right. This is the not, um, the Gospel of the Secret Supper. Very interesting, very controversial. I'm not going to... I'm going to make some commentary, but... I'm going to just try to bring it to you as it reads so that you can hear it in its entirety. It's a very interesting text. And then the, the, depending on time, if I have to, I'll skip to the last part too because it has a very interesting take on the end of days, and one that I think you should hear. Probably will have to skip some of this, but all right, it says this. Who brought you here? I, John, who am your brother and share with you the tribulation of having shared the kingdom of the skies since I was lying on the chest of our Lord Jesus Christ, asked him, Lord, who brought you here? He answered me, he who put his hand in the plate with me. So Satan entered him and he, Judas, had already betrayed me. Before Satan fell. And I said, Lord, before Satan fell, what was his glory beside your father's? And he told me, such was his glory that he governed the virtues of heaven. As for me, I sat next to my father. Satan was the master of all those who imitated the father. And his power descended from the sky to the inferno and rose again from the inferno to the throne of the invisible Father. And he observed the glory of him who transformed the skies. And he dreamed of placing his seat on the clouds of heaven because he wanted to be like the very high. Then... Having descended into the air, he said to the angel of the air, Open the gates of the air for me. And the angel opened the gates of the air, and he went on his way to the bottom. There he found the angel who guarded the waters, and he said to him, Open the gates of the water for me. And the angel opened the gates of the water. Going ahead, he found the whole face of the earth and saw Two fish who were stretched over the waters. They were like two oxen joined together for plowing. And at the invisible Father's order, held up the earth from sunset to sunrise. When he descended farther down, he found himself in the presence of clouds weighing on the tidal waves of the sea. He went on until he got to his osa which is the principle of fire. After that, he could not descend farther because of the intense flame of the fire. And then Satan came in from behind and filled his own heart with malice. And reaching the angel of the air and the one who was above the waters, he said to them, Everything belongs to me. If you listen to me, I will place my seat on the clouds 
and I shall be similar to the very high. I will withdraw the waters of the upper firmament and assemble all the areas occupied by the sea into one entity of vast sea. And that done, there will be no water on the face of the entire earth. And I shall reign with you through the centuries of the centuries. And he said this. The angel Satan rose toward the other angels to the fifth heaven. And to each of them he said, How much do you owe your masters? One hundred measures of wheat, one of them answered. Take pen and ink, he said to them, and write forty. He told the others, And you, how much do you owe the Lord? He told one hundred jars of oil, he answered him. Sit down, Satan said to him, and write fifty. He climbed into the skies and with such words seduced the angels of the invisible father up to the fifth heaven. But a voice came out of the throne of the father saying, What are you doing? Denier of the father, you who are seducing the angels, creator of sin, hurry with what you hope to do. And then the father ordered his angels, rip off their robes. The angels stripped off all those angels who had listened to Satan of their robes, their thrones, and their crowns. And I questioned the Lord further. When Satan plummeted, where did he make his living place? And he responded to me. My father transformed him because of his pride and he withdrew the light from him. His face became like red fire and was fully like that of a man. He dragged with his tail the third part of the angels of God and he was hurled down from his seat and from his domain in the skies. Descending to the firmament of the fallen angels, he found no place to rest for himself, for those who were with him. And he begged the Father, saying, Be patient with me, and I will return everything to you. The Father pitied him and gave him with those with him rest and permission to do what he wished to do on the seventh day. All right, continuing on. Interesting book, huh? Does this not also remind you of Luke chapter 21 where it says, uh, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the heaven? Because here, uh, this is Yahushua, Jesus Christ, speaking to John and telling him the story of Satan's fall and how he was witness to all this. Okay. So he installed himself in his heaven and commanded his angels who were with above the air and above the waters. He lifted two parts of the water from bottom to top into the air, and from the third part he made the sea, which became the mistress of the waters. But according to the Father's commandment, he also prescribed the angel who was above the waters, hold up the two fish, and he lifted the earth from the bottom top and dry land appeared. He took the crown of the angel who commanded the waters and from one half made the light of the moon and from the other the light of the stars. With precious stones he made the army of the stars and then he chose the angels. For his ministers, according to the celestial hierarchies, established by the very high and by command of the invisible father he made thunder the rains the frost the snows he placed his angels and ministers over them to govern them and he commanded the earth to produce every kind of great beasts all reptiles trees grasses he commanded the sea to produce fish and the sky birds after that he reflected he made a man so that he might have a slave 
He ordered the angel of the third sky to enter the body of mud from which he then took out a part for making another body in the form of a woman. And he commanded the angel of the second sky to enter the body of the woman, but these angels wept when they saw that they had there an external mortal form and that they were dissimilar in that external form. Satan joined them in this act of turning their bodies of mud into flesh. The angels did not perceive that in this way he also committed a sin. I'm going to stop here for just a second and uh, make a remark here, because a lot of people that, if you've not studied the Nathamani codices, nor um, some of the Gnostic texts, that speak about the creation of these mud bodies, the flesh bodies of Adam and Eve. This is the eighth day body, uh, the eighth day bodies of Adam and Eve, which, which were the dust bodies that they incarnated in. And these bodies were made as an agreement between the higher and the lower authorities. And according to the text, it does say that that Satan did have part to play in the formation of or the molding, not the creation, because he did not create the angelic, the sixth day out of a paradise. But he did have part in forming the flesh body, because the flesh body holds both the contrary spirit as well as the uh, the angel of righteousness. We are dual natured in the flesh in that we have the watcher and the holy one with us. We have a good angel and a bad angel with us while we are in the flesh. And so, and that's why. It's because our bodies, our flesh bodies, these eighth day bodies are created as an agreement from both the higher and the lower angels. And if you study the text, it will give more detail about that. But just wanted to clarify that aspect of it. All right, then going into continuing. The announcer of coming evils meditated in his spirit on the way he would fashioned paradise and then he ordered the people to enter it and the angels to lead them to it. The devil planted a reed in the middle of paradise and in one spit he made the serpent whom he commanded to live in the reed in such way. The devil concealed his evil design so that he might not know his trickery and he entered paradise and spoke with them. He said to them, Eat from all the fruit that is found in paradise, but beware of eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Listen to this part. It's very interesting. However, the devil slipped into the body of the evil serpent and seduced the angel who was in the form of woman. And he spread over her head the powerful desire of sin. And he satiated Eve with his bodily desire while he attended to the serpent's tail. That is why humans are called the children of the devil and children of the serpent because they serve the desire of the devil who is their father and will serve it until the consummation of this century. Then I, John, question the Lord. How can one say that Adam and Eve were created by God and placed in paradise to obey the Father's orders, but they were then delivered to death. The Lord answered me, listen, John, beloved of my Father, it is the ignorant who say in their error that my Father made these bodies of mud. Now, this is important, because this also gives confirmation to my next upcoming book, because I talked about the separate creations of Adam in that book. The sixth day Adam of paradise, the one that was given the breath of life that was created in paradise, this Adam was made in the image of Yahushua, Adam of light. 
who is made in the image of the Father. And so Adam of Paradise was made in the image of the immortal, unbegotten, invisible Father. But the eighth day Adam, Adam of dust, this Adam was made as a blend of dual nature of higher and lower angelic nature. And it's important for you to understand that because here the Lord is telling John that his father was not responsible for creating these bodies of flesh. And unless you understand the Nakamadi uh, stories and understand that the Adam of dust, the eighth day Adam, was not in fact created by the father, but created by the angels of the higher and the lower orders, then you can understand the story. Okay, reading that again. Listen, John, beloved of my father, it is the ignorant who say in their error that my father made these bodies of mud. In reality, he created all the virtues of heaven through the Holy Spirit, but it is through their sin that they found themselves with mortal bodies of mud and were consequently turned over to death. What he's talking about here is the six-day Adam of paradise that was created in paradise that was given the breath of life that when they were seduced by Lucifer and tricked to eat of the the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's when they lost their immortal bright natures. It was their responsibility that they ended up in bodies of what are termed bodies of mud, mortal bodies of mud here, which are the eighth day bodies of dust that they were placed into after their fall. So you have to understand that there's the difference, there's difference between the sixth day Adam of paradise and their immortal bright natures and the flesh bodies that they then transform and inhabit on the eighth day when they are kicked from paradise, placed on the wilderness of the earth and told to live in a place called the cave of treasures. You have to understand the difference. All right, continuing. And again, I, John, question the Lord. How can a man become born in spirit in a body of flesh? And the Lord answered, descended from angels, fallen from the sky. That's us, y'all. Okay, this is important too. This gives you confirmation that we were first world age spirits, now incarnated into the flesh. Says this, descended from angels, fallen from the sky, men enter the body of a woman and receive the desire of the flesh. Spirit is born then from the spirit and flesh from the flesh. So Satan accomplishes his reign in this world and in all nations. He told me further, my, my father permitted him to rule seven days, seven days which are seven centuries. So Satan rules for 7,000 years, which is what I've been telling you for a long time now. So did you get that? The Lord is telling John here, descended from angels fallen from the sky, that's us. Men enter the body of a woman and receive the desire of the flesh. Spirit is born then from the spirit and flesh from the flesh. So Satan accomplishes reign in this world and in all nations. That reign is getting us as spiritual beings to be caught up and trapped up in the flesh. That is Satan's rule and reign over this world. He is the king of this world. For the short time that the Lord has allowed him rule. All right, I know I'm quickly running out of time, so I'm going to try to get through this. Okay. And again, I asked the Lord, I said to him, what did he do during all that time? And he told me, from the instant the devil was expelled from the glory of the Father, 
and was forbidden to take part in the affairs of heaven. He sat on the clouds and sent his ministers, angels burning with fire, down below to the people. He did so from the time of Adam to Enoch. We're running out of time. I'm going to try to skip to this last passage. All right, we're going to try to skip to the part where it talks about heaven and hell, the lake of fire. This is important. And then I asked the Lord about the day of judgment. What will be the sign of your coming? He answered me. It will be when the name of the just will be consummated according to the name of the just one who have been crowned and fallen from the sky. Then Satan will be freed and will leave his prison. Pray to great anger, he will make war on the just, and they will cry to the Lord God in a great voice. And the Lord will immediately command his angels to the sound of the trumpet. The voice of the archangel in the trumpet will be heard from heaven to the inferno. And then the sun will darken and the moon will give no more light. The stars will fall and the four winds will be torn from the foundations. They will make the earth tremble and also the mountains and the hills. Immediately the sky will tremble, the sun darken until the fourth hour. Then will appear the earthly sun and with him all the saintly angels. And then the sun rises and he will place his feet on the clouds and will sit on the throne of his majesty with 12 messengers seated on the 12 chairs of glory. The books will be opened and he will judge the universe according to the elect. From the four winds and the summits of the skies to the corners of the world and bring them before him. The earthly sun will send for the bad demons to bring all the bad nations with him. And he will say to them, come here you who say we have eaten well and drunk and enjoyed the goods of this world. Then he will direct them all before the tribunal, and they will be shaking with terror. And the books of life will be opened, and there will be known the thoughts of all the nations of the impieties. And the Lord will glorify the just and their patience and good deeds. Those who have followed the angelic prescriptions will gain glory, honor, and imperishability. Those who have obeyed the iniquity of the devil will share in anger, indignation, and the torments of anguish. The earthly son will take the elect from the midst of the sinners and say to them, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, receive the kingdom that has been prepared for you since the organization of the world. He will say to the sinners, Go far from the cursed ones into the eternal fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Then all the others, seeing that the time has come for the ultimate separation, will pity the sinners in their inferno, who will be there by order of the invisible Father. The souls will leave the prison of the unbelievers, and also my voice will be heard. And there will be no more than one sheepfold and one pastor that will issue from the depths of the earth a dark gloom, which is the dark gloom of Gehenna of fire. And fire will consume the universe from the abysses of the earth to the air of the firmament, and the Lord will reign from the firmament to the infernos of the earth. The lake of fire where the sinners will live is so deep that some that a stone that a 30-year-old man lifts and drops to the bottom will barely reach the floor of the lake after three years. Then Satan will be bound with all his troops and placed in the lake of fire. But the Son of God and his elect will stroll on the firmament, and he will lock the devil lying there in strong, indestructible chains. The sinners weeping and lamenting will say, Earth, take us back and hide us in you. The just will glow like a son in the kingdom of the invisible Father, and the Son of God will take them before the throne of the invisible Father and say to them, Here I am with my children whom you have given me, just Father. The world has not known you, but I have truly known you, because it is you who have sent me on my mission. Last part. 
Then the father will answer his son with these words, My beloved son, sit down to my right hand until I place at your legs as a stool your enemies who have denied me and have said we are gods and besides us there are no other gods. They have killed the prophets and persecuted the just. It is you now who will pursue them into the remote gloom where there will be tears and the grinding of teeth. Then the Son of God will sit at the right of the Father, and the Father will govern his angels and govern the elect. He will place them in choirs of angels, dress them in perishable garments, and give them unfading crowns and immutable seats. And God will be seated in the midst of them. They will not know hunger or thirst, The sun will not strike them, nor any burning heat, and God will banish all tears from their eyes. The sun will reign with his saintly father, and his reign will have no end from centuries to centuries. Well, we made it through. That is the Gospel of the Secret Supper. And we only had to skip four paragraphs, I think, within the context of the book. So I hope that you enjoyed those two particular passages. Hello, Sister Peace333. I just want to give a shout-out to you. And to all the other guests and listeners that come and check out the archives, I know all of you don't often make it for the live shows, but that you do uh, come for the archives and that a lot of you are downloading the shows and sharing them with your friends and your loved ones. I pray for your discernment. I pray for your truth and that you can come to terms with it because, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes truth presents itself in the ugliest disguises and the ugliest forms, but it's up to us to accept it for what it is in the shape and the form and sometimes the thoughty nature that we find truth contained within. Not always pretty people, but, um, but, you know, truth is what it is and it has the power and the capacity to set free our souls from bondage because the word of God is the truth. The gospel is light and it has power to lead those who truly study it to salvation of soul, to eternal life, to immortality and to a return to our first estate. And how incredible is that, that we are angels in the flesh, that we are incarnated into the flesh for this time and space to verify, to prove again to our Father and to the Son. And as to our just deserves, our our rewards, whether they be in heaven or in hell, it is determined every day by how it choo- how we choose to be in this world. And so I just pray that you all awaken to your own truth and truth so that you too can prepare for those things that are coming because we are dealing with the strange, strange reality. And to verify that, this last little piece, God bless all of you who should you always say. Amen. A number of things that uh, I've heard uh, from people in the Pentagon that the buzzword in the, in the secret of secrets in the Pentagon is uh, the Sumerian gods are returning. And that's what they're referring to is that whole area uh, uh, that uh, Peter Wow. Said. Can you repeat that again just in case anybody missed it? The well, buzzword uh, in... In the Pentagon, in the, you know, the military circles that are in the know about the cover-up here, um, the they kind of in whispered tones talk about the return of the Sumerian gods. 
and they're talking about the uh, what we would call aliens or fallen angels returning uh, into the Middle East, uh, into Old Sumer area. The Anunnaki. Well, could be. Under the other ancient names. Do yeah. you think that has anything to do with why we're in a... Now give a shout-out to Voice in the Wilderness as well. God bless all. Take care.